Hoka One One Speed Goat 5. First impressions, let's get into it right now. So, if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know I am a huge Speed Goat 4 fan. I have almost 600 miles. I finally uh, <laughs> retired these Speed Goat 4s. They were covered in mud from the last race. They were actually retired before that last eight hour race. And because it was such a sloppy, muddy mess of a race, I didn't want to kind of ruin any of my other shoes. So I wore this shoe. And even after 600 miles, the lugs on this thing were still holding tight, didn't have any issues. And uh, even though it is feeling a little crushed out, uh, I still think I could probably use this on some shorter trail runs just to keep the mileage off the newer shoes. So for this kind of comparison of the Speedgoat 4 to the Speedgoat 5, I bought myself another Speedgoat 4 brand new. And well, it's going to be a good shoe to have to race anyways, because the Speedgoat 4 is a phenomenal shoe. I was Using this as a backup just in case the Speed Goat 5 was a bust. Luckily, my initial run in the Speed Goat 5 was successful. It's a fantastic shoe. Uh, there is no real noticeable difference between the shoes. And any noticeable difference so far have been uh, only good things. There's nothing that I've noticed that is like, wow, I really wish they didn't do that. So... First and foremost, what I noticed right off the bat is putting my foot in the shoe, and this is going to be a little hard to explain. In the Speed Goat 4, I always felt like there was some sort of, not posting, not like they had support out here, but this lateral part of this shoe always felt like there was something there. Now, I didn't notice it when I was running, but when I put my foot in there, it always felt like I had a little bit more support in this area for some reason. And even in the new shoe, it felt the same exact way. So I felt a little more pressure uh, right behind the pinky toe where that, that joint is, that knuckle. Uh, did not feel that at all. So this Speed Goat 5 really felt a little bit more flatter and I didn't have that same sensation. And secondly, I noticed right off the bat, obviously, this is much different than the little pull tab on the back of there. Uh, didn't notice it. Uh, as good or bad or anything like that. People said they felt pressure here on their Achilles tendon. I never felt that. So this is kind of a, a neutral thing to me. It didn't feel any difference. The other thing I felt right off the bat is the change to the tongue. This was something I always noticed in the Speed Goat 4. So you can see how that's pretty, pretty much straight across. There's a little bit of an indentation where they kind of shaped the tongue. This was phenomenal. While I never had a major issue with this, it was always kind of awkward. It never rubbed me raw or anything like that. The next thing that I noticed is right here on the outside. Now they have this little mesh area that allows the shoe to flex. Now, I don't know if they did that because people were complaining that the there was not enough room in the toe box of the shoe. I do know that there was some uh, peeling of the overlays in the Speed Goat 4 and I did many videos of the Speed Goat 4. I put it through the test and if you are interested in seeing any of those videos, I'll put them down in the description. I never had that come up, but I did get a lot of feedback from people who ran in Speed Goat 4 that that did peel up. Now you can see that these peeled up within the first 20 miles of running and but after that never had another problem with the shoe. The shoe has been a fantastic workhorse of a shoe. It just looks pretty ugly. I mean, I didn't like that part. So all that stuff's removed. All those overlays are removed off the shoe. The shoe is anywhere from about a half an ounce to an ounce lighter than the Speed Goat 4. And it does feel like it. Obviously, it feels a lot heavier or a lot lighter than the old Speed Goat 4 that I have. Probably because all the dirt is probably still in that one. Uh, they and, and the other major thing, while I am concerned about this new upper in this being this, this double layered jacquard mesh. One good thing about the Speed Goat 4 that others said they didn't like is that this was a kind of a non-breathable, non-stretchable type uh, upper. I am a little concerned that over time that this upper is going to stretch out. And that worries me. On a shoe that I want to put four, five, six hundred miles on, 
I just don't know if this upper is going to last. I mean, you can see this upper, while it did have troubles with the overlay, it, it held tight. No stretching. I never had any issues. It never folded in any way that rubbed my foot. Uh, so that leads me to the last part of the impression of this shoe. Again, this was just an initial impression of my first run in the shoe. Felt super comfortable right off the bat. Felt really comfortable on my foot, but because I just bought a brand new Speedgoat 4 and had been running in it the day before, I could immediately feel, while they say there isn't a difference, I mean, the stack height's the same, everything's the same, they have changed the lug pattern a little bit, the bounce in the shoe is not the same. I thought I was imagining it. <sighs> Running in the Speedgoat 4, I can feel the response in this in the shoe. It's a uh, you know max cushion shoe, so it protects me on these really rocky trails. That's what I love about the shoe. Virginia has really rocky trails. We'll just tear the bottom of your feet up. And these, it protects you from those roots and, and, and rocks sticking, protruding out of the ground that will tear the bottom of your foot up. I think the Speedgoat 5 is gonna do the same thing, but it doesn't feel as springy. While it does give you the same cushion, it doesn't have the same responsiveness to me and again, I'm a 210 pound runner and this shoe feels really sp responsive, really squishy, responsive shoe. The Speedgo 5 just doesn't feel that way. It's a great shoe. Uh, I'm gonna love this shoe. I can't wait to, to race in this shoe. It's lighter, which is gonna be fantastic. So that's a concern to me that it doesn't have that. So I'm hoping that the, the midsole of this shoe holds together as well as the Speedgoat 4 because this shoe has held together very well. You can see minimal kind of crushing out of the shoe. It's still providing a lot of cushion in it. Because they did change the compound in this shoe, I am worried about the durability of it. I am worried about it, just because right off the bat, it doesn't have the same responsiveness. I'm worried about the durability of this upper. While it's gonna be more breathable, more comfortable, it doesn't have the overlays peeling up, whereas it's really, that's cosmetic, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I am worried about the stretching out of this upper over time. So we'll see, I will definitely keep you updated uh, I think I did four reviews of the Speedgoat 4 because, you know, things could change. They could be awesome right off the bat, the first 50 miles, first 100 miles. But when you get two, three, 400 miles, what you should be getting out of your Hoka's, these max cushion shoes should be giving you at least 400 or more miles. We'll see what the Speedgoat 5 does. Uh, I'm hoping it does well. I'm hoping it does well because it is more expensive. I think it's 10 more dollars than the Speedgoat 4. So... If you, if you haven't tried the Speedgoat 4 and you like the Speedgoat 5, you can find a good price on the Speedgoat 4. I'd say buy it because I think I might even get myself another one. Because if I can get 500, 600 miles out of another pair of trail shoes, I'm going to take it. Go ahead and click right there and it will take you to a playlist of all the reviews of the Speedgoat 4. You're going to want to watch those because I am very thorough in what I put the Speedgoat 4 through. I'm going to do the same thing with Speedgoat 5. Go ahead and click right there. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.